I'm going to make a pitch to Hasbro Pulse and, you know, the brilliant people at the making the G.I. Joe Classified series. I'm going to give you 15 characters that I think you should make right now, uh, but you probably won't. Uh, these these all would kill. We would all love these. And I think this is something that uh, fans would just like be crazy if you about if you made these figures. Here's 15 G.I. Joe classified figures Hasbro should make, but they're probably not gonna. At least not anytime soon. Let's just get this one out of the way. We all want it. They're not gonna do it. Hooded Cobra Commander. I like my Cobra Commander uncircumcised, okay? Uh, I just, you know, always, even as a kid, I just think he looks more badass uh, with the hood. You know, everybody has a helmet, and there's a million with a, hel uh, a million characters with a helmet. And once you introduce the Vipers, it's just like now he just looks like another Viper. He just doesn't look as unique or special um, as he does with the hood. He's kind of scary with the hood, I gotta admit. And I get it. You don't want to have kids playing with this character that supposedly looks like he's a Ku Klux Klan member. Come on, man. Everybody with a hood, it looks like a Ku Klux Klan member. What about those uh, stormtroopers in the snow in Empire Strikes Back? Are they canceled too? <laughs> it's ridiculous. Give us the hood for God's sakes. I'm sorry you can get you know a hooded Cobra Commander head on eBay or Etsy or whatever, 3D printed, but I want the real deal. Um, always like the hood better it just looks better it looks cooler he's scarier with it you know it just feels more like he's this cult leader this mega maniacal uh maniac this you know brilliant guy not the annoying dude from the cartoon that's always retreating and screaming retreat 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 you know, the creepy, smart, brilliant psychopath from the comic book. That guy wears a hood. Nobody wears a helmet all the time. It's uncomfortable. You, you got to have a time where you got to breathe. The man's got to have some time for himself. Give us the hood. So next on the list, I want to see a cold slither pack, right? Four pack of cold slither. And, you know, I know... That's more something like Super 7 would do, but we don't want a Super 7 Cold Slither as much as we want a classified. I want a Super 7 Cold Slither pack. I don't know why they haven't done it, because they've done everything else. They've done the weird blind guy in the, with a dog sled, uh, but they don't have Cold Slither yet. Get on that. But we want the G.I. Joe Classified Cold Slither pack. I know it's it, it's it's a it's the cartoon, and we haven't dipped much in the cartoon here in the classified. But I noticed with the new Quick Hick, there there uh, he came with a, he's coming with a fudgies bar. So uh, with the, they're playing with that cartoon. Fudgies. Say what? Fudgies. You mean the candy bars I was plugging? Just a little bit more, and they're gonna start introducing some of the more fun elements, which I think is fun. Like that's kind of how I like to do it. I don't. Uh, I'm a comic book guy. I love the comic book way more than I like the cartoon, but I still have affection for the cartoon. And you know, sometimes those little elements would come into play. But I can even see like a a cool, you know, Zartan and Dreadnoughts undercover story going on as this, you know, Spinal Tap like rock band, you know, uh, Cold Slither. And uh, I think it would be just a good looking set. Maybe have some secret weapons like hidden within the. Uh, drum kit or the instruments you know that kind of thing uh, I think it would be awesome next on the list I want to see Headman. that's right Cobra's drug dealer I mean what a weird character why did they do this you're 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 giving a drug dealer to little kids you know it's weird <laughs> it's a weird thing to do this is why they probably aren't going to do this one anytime soon but man uh that that's just cool and he just even he, look, he looks like a pimp i mean he's dressed like a pimp he's he's just like all scummy looking he's got that slick uh you know uh all the garb and he's got those like uh boots where he's got these little shit kicker uh, you know tips uh on the on his shoes that uh, you know uh, have a maybe maybe some sort of like 
sharp knife with a poison drug tip or something. And, you know, he just looks very cool. I just love the idea of a drug dealer uh, action figure. Uh, they did it once. Do it again. We're adults. We can handle it. You know, might as well at this point just have them come with a couple bags of Coke. You know, for the kids. You know, you know, for kids. <laughs> You know, for kids. Maybe not, but bring back Headman anyway. It's a cool, uh, it was a cool and weird era of G.I. Joe, and I always dug the character. And, and, you know, and it's realistic. Like, let's face facts. Like, how is terrorism funded? Terrorism is funded by drugs and by selling drugs. Like, you know, I, I that's Cobra would have had to dip in there eventually. I mean, it's not like there are moral... Uh, uh, paragons and they're above doing immoral shit you know they they have slaves for god's sakes in the cartoon they have little slaves i mean they they would they would sell some drugs uh so and it's canon so i say bring it back extensive enterprise tomax and zama Bioli, right i want to see them in suits they're, they're dressed right now in like these carnival outfits that make them look like uh you know they they they're gonna go on a flying trapeze you know it's i get it it's their um their dress clothes for the you know big cobra rallies and, and shit but uh i think you know they make much more sense in uh just suits and you know maybe it could come in a, a two-pack this time why did you separate them i have no idea come in a two-pack come with some briefcases that you can open up maybe have some hidden weapons some knives and like the handle like you know in, in james bond kind of shit um like that briefcase and from russia with love yeah flat throwing knife press that button there now she comes undercover extensive enterprises version of tomax and zaman give us some damn october guard and maybe they won't because i know russia is doing everything and invading countries and they're the evil and they're you know fixing our elections and or whatever the hell they're doing or the media thinks they're doing but would it be politically incorrect to you know make a couple october guard i mean they made dana and uh that pisses me off too because that's that's another figure i'd love to i'd love to be able to buy the dana figure but you can only get her as an exclusive pack from uh comic con from a few years back and now she's like 300 bucks on ebay i ain't spending 300 bucks for basically a repackaged repainted figure no release it in the line right so we start with her uh, I, obviously i don't expect you to come out with all the october guard at once uh but let's start with horror show uh my favorite of the october guard and if you if you're gonna make horror show you gotta make him big he's gotta be like the biggest figure you've ever made right so he should be you know like gung-ho i love how big the gung-ho figure he's like towers over all the other figures but i want i, I want horror show a foot above gung-ho he's got to be massive and stocky and just, just huge and uh, and uh, but horror show would be a great figure. And then when you're done with horror show, Dragonski, right? The flamethrower guy. I always loved the way he looked, and I never got a figure of him. Uh, they did come out with one, one of those um, collectors club exclusives. They're hard to get. And at that time, I was broke, and I wasn't buying, you know, fifty dollar GI Joe action figures. I was, you know, trying to pay rent, uh, so I wasn't going out and doing that kind of thing. So I never got a Dragonski figure, and I always wanted one. Um, yeah, flamethrower trooper. He's wearing purple. Purple's not a good choice for a soldier, sure, but he looks cool. He's got a cool character, um, and I want that character too. So then, come out with a Dana. Dana, I think that you uh, that we can actually buy. You know, no more of this. Uh, exclusive we come out with is five of them and you gotta hunt for them for the rest of your life and you know kill someone and steal theirs in order to get it just come out with one that a normal person can buy and you know i always like liked her hot russian women are hot that's why they sell them through mail order apparently um but you know this ad that's probably right here is telling you you can buy one and that's what it is for me and uh, uh she she's she's a hot soldier russian soldier russian lady always a cool character and in general i just like all the october guards uh and, and while you're at it you're gonna do that might as well make that tank that they had in uh, this issue of the comic book right now we're cooking next figure i want to see give us a, 
Crimson Guard Fred, right? I know it's easy. You could get bash a Fred easily, you know, rip off a head of any blonde character and shove it on a Crimson Guard body. But I want it done up. Like, give us, him, give us uh, a suitcase with a suit that he can take out or at least opens up and shows his, his Crimson Guard suit. Give us maybe some secret or hidden weapons and give us the head swap. You know, I, uh, the whole idea of the Crimson Guard is that they're undercover, they're living among us, right? And, and that is something that I think was a missed opportunity with that figure that should have come with a, a head sculpt. Um, a lot of these deep cuts are going to come from the comic book if you're not a person who absolutely loved the comic book and you more love, I know we all come from it uh, to G.I. Joe love from various different directions. Some people, child of the 80s, you grew up with it and maybe you just played with the figures and you read the file cards. Maybe you were a comic book nut and you read the comic book. Maybe you watched the cartoon and that was your main in. Or maybe you had like you know 10 years ago you got into it or maybe right now you're getting into it just because you like the figures so we all come to it for different reasons and they are some of the best figures around so i can see that um so if you're not a comic book fan specifically a lot of these are going to be deep cuts from the comic book fred was uh, a lead character in the crimson guard he was you know we followed him and his story and his family he had a family a wife and kids he eventually replaced cobra commander and uh and until cobra commander came back and took his place back from fred and it was a really good and interesting storyline so i want to see that character speaking of other deep cuts from the comic book get us a billy action figure billy is cobra commander's son and now he brings a lot of drama to the story and that uh you know he's he's cobra commander's son and at some point, Cobra Commander just sends Scrap Iron to just bomb the shit out of him. Scrap Iron blows him up, uh, almost killing him, kills the Soft Master, and, you know, Billy comes back later, and he's all screwed up, and he's missing an eye, and then he becomes a ninja. So, he's, so you know, you have this, you know, he's a great opportunity to bring lore into the line, have a really good figure that would be you know among you're making all these ninjas and you know one, one every three weeks there's a new ninja character like nunchuck and whatever um and i'm fine with that that's cool but billy would be way better than you know nunchuck or kamakura you know he's a ninja you deck him out in storm shadow garb with an eye patch make him the youngest character you got and he would just kill it it would bring all kinds of cool lore you know i just i'd be like loving that package art could just tell the story i never quite got a billy uh, billy figure i ended up making one that was one of the only kit bashes i did as a kid where i i uh, took a destroyed storm shadow took the old ring out put a you know head on it from another character and just turned him in and you know made my own little eye patch with some sharpie and i had a billy character that i would use and so he was such an important character in the comic book and such a cool storyline that that would be awesome give us the one that started it all joe colton right uh, the Joe Colton figure, and this is really familiar for anybody who's seen the movie. Uh, he was played by Bruce Willis uh, in uh, Retaliation, which is not the greatest movie of all time, but um, of the three, maybe my favorite. Uh, in I don't want the Bruce Willis version, but in the comic book, there was a pretty good and interesting arc where they brought in the guy that the team was named for, Joe Colton. And he is the original G.I. Joe, basically. And he's, he's patterned after the original big-ass G.I. Joe dolls with the beard and the scar. So he would just look like that. And maybe he could be older at this point, an aging character. And uh, they did a really good storyline that Larry Hammer wrote about him. And uh, that would be an awesome deep cut. Okay, next. Pythona. I know Cobra La is dumb and really silly and brings in a sci-fi fantasy element that doesn't necessarily belong in G.I. Joe. And that's how I felt when I was a kid. When I came out, 
And I was used to the cartoon being, you know, goofy and silly and doing all kinds of weird shit. But they came out with Cobra Law, and I was like, ah, why is they, why are they going so weirdly heavy sci-fi? But then I got the figures, and I got to admit, as much as I thought it was dumb, they were awesome. They were just um, Nemesis Enforcer, Galobulus, the the soldiers in general were just weird, cool fucked up designs that work you know in a bizarro fantasy world they just look like like they come out of weird fantasy they you're just uh, like a pulp magazine like weird fantasy they are uh, really amazing looking amazingly designed things and they're pretty badass so as much as i gotta say that uh um, i got all snobby and was like no gi joe's too realistic for this uh, they're they're fun, and I never got a Pythona. Again, they came out with a Pythona in the collectors club, but I didn't get one then, and I ain't gonna spend hundreds of dollars on one now. Give us that figure today, and you know, deck her out with those big old claw hands, and give her one of that those you know weird plant weapons that she throws at people that you know create noxious gases I think she'd be cool and and I, I also I, you know I, I they will have to do a Cobra Law eventually as much as some of us um, kind of hate it kind of love it I'm like a love and hate with Cobra Law because uh, it breaks with the reality that I like in my story but I love that movie uh, I love the figures you know, and for the nostalgia's sake, I do want them. I don't know if I'd put them out and they'd be part of the shelf here, you know, but I do want them. Scarface. Now, this one's a pretty easy kit bash. All you gotta do is take one of your Cobra soldiers and scar them up a bit, but... Even as just like a troop builder, why not just throw out yet another variation of the Cobra Soldier, scar his face, and give us that character from the comic book. Um, this is a character that was uh, really just a Cobra officer that was given, or a soldier that was given, you know, a lot of story, and um, went pretty far until he finally got killed. But uh, he was he was badass. He was pretty pretty evil, and um, he had a memorable line and a good look. And along alongside him is the next one, which I think this one we're all gonna agree on. And, and there's been tons of customs on this one. But give us Doctor Venom. And and here's my th and here's what I want, Doctor. I don't want just Doctor Venom. I want a deluxe ass Doctor Venom. In with the brainwave scanner dr. venom is the guy that created the brainwave scanner he was like the scarier version of dr. mindbender I was like dr. mindbender is like weirder and funnier and you know bizarre uh, but uh, dr. venom was like just just like evil he was just like a nasty human being um, and he created the brainwave scanner he was a torturer he shot Quinn in the back he was just an evil nasty guy till he uh, finally met uh, his death at the hands of Quinn and uh, then uh, but he would make a great figure and you're seeing a lot of people making customs of them that's a clue I'm hoping the people at Hasbro are listening here you should be listening to me probably not because I got like you know 40 people following me but because i just started like two months ago but you should listen to somebody all right listen to another one of these like big you know gi joe classified uh people and get us a dr venom have them come with the brainwave scanner uh it will kill you everybody will love it next we have the man that dr venom killed Probably one of my favorite all-time characters, Quinn, the Eskimo, right? Warrior. They came with the figure, and he was a great figure. He had tons of weapons. He had a heavy machine gun. He had all kinds of, sort of Eskimo blades, and and so you'd have a real opportunity. He, he'd be one of the bigger figures too. He'd have to be big, like gung ho. He'd have to be towering over everybody. And this was like a great 
storyline. It's one of the best stories told in the car, uh, in the comic book, um, which was also known for. You know, I think Larry Hama did a really great job of creating these re really complex villains who were not necessarily that bad. They were, you know, they were men for hire, but they had honor. They uh, they just, you know, were morally ambiguous i think uh destro is is similar he's not evil he's out for himself which maybe is the definition of evil i guess in, in real life um but there was this complexity to him and eventually quinn ends up teaming with snake eyes and they go on this odyssey together until quinn is killed and they never made a figure in the original line because he was already dead in the comic book so i guess they said why not why make a figure about it dead dude but uh, later on they made figures and um, it was a great figure and a big detailed good looking Quinn would be incredible okay this one's a deep cut I'm gonna admit this was a deep cut but I want it Rowdy Roddy Piper he was a, originally Rowdy Roddy Piper was going to be brought in as like the antagonist for Sergeant Slaughter I was a big wrestling fan in the in the eighties. Um, I, I don't you know quite follow it anymore. And when the the loves of the of wrestling and GI Joe converge, you know I don't never really kind of gelled that much with the Sergeant Slaughter thing, but it was cool. But I always loved Roddy Roddy Piper, and then made then he made They Live, and I really love him. But later on, they did produce a figure in, as part of the Collectors Club. And he was an iron grenadier, which I just great, right? So he's wearing a kilt. You know, they went with the, he's Scottish, so he must be part of the Destro clan. And he was the trainer for uh, Destro's army, is the iron grenadier trainer. And man, that would be awesome. Bring in Rowdy Roddy Piper, give him the bagpipes, give him the kilt. I think that would be uh, uh, an awesome deep cut. All right, last one. And uh, this would be uh, an awesome figure that I don't think you're going to do. Give us a snake eyes with a fucked up face, right? I want to see the, and I don't want the one from the comic book that was when they finally revealed his face. It was like the biggest disappointment because there was early parts in the comic book where, you know, I mean, the man, the man, uh, his face was on fire for like five minutes Enough to burn his vocal cords so they are gone. Uh, he should look like Freddy Krueger. He should look like Deadpool, all right, uh, with, the, with, this, with his mask off. And then you go and you show um, you show him with his mask off, and he's basically got like a scar here, and on his eyes a little like... Rrr. Yeah. I want to see that, like... I want, like, Freddy Krueger gross, right? Have just a snap-off head, Freddy Krueger, nasty... Um, mask off maybe even come with the mask so he, so often in the car, comic book when snake eyes was going around and like in public he would wear like a human mask and a hat um and it was like that would be so disturbing like uncanny valley would just be kicked in it would be like uh that scene in drive or, you know that would that would be what it would look like so i want that head i want the that underneath uh, i want that mask to go over his like messed up effed up face and then i want you know give us a, a swappable head that would be an awesome snake eyes and uh, make him hideous make him nasty just you know don't soften the blow so that's it those are my pitches for Hasbro Pulse. I hope you people are listening. I'm pretty sure you're not, but you should because these are some damn good ideas and some damn deep cuts. Tell me in the comments below if you uh, which ones of these ideas you like and tell me if I missed any. Are there anything is there anything else here you would like to see that you don't think they're going to even be thinking about?